All right, so before continuing on, a huge shout out to our sponsor, PCBUA, for sponsoring our open hardware flight controller. This is a great place to have your PCB manufactured as well as assembled with great quality and fast service. Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back. So today I'm going to be designing a new FPV latency camera testing board just because of this one's so fragile, and I think I got, like, the perfect setup. So I'm going to be showing you the way I'm going to design mine, have it done. And if you wanted to, you can order it as well. All you'll need is Arduino Nano other than the PCB. And and uh, this may take regulator here, exactly this one, because that's the pinout you're gonna see in the video. Uh, this is Arduino Nano. It's using, you know, the uh, it's using two pins. One to tell us when the LED was turned on, and the other one to control the LED, which we're using an RGB LED here. As you can tell in here, it's actually all connected inside. And at the same time, this board is giving 5 volt to the camera and the video and ground are being routed to these two pins right here, these two lines. So you have, this is the ground and this is the video. So what that does is I could come with my oscilloscope, grab the video feed just like so. And so I can test this latency and obviously the ground of an oscilloscope is always an alligator clip or most of the time, like 99% of the time. So this way I'm actually, I can watch my uh, video feed that's coming from the FPV camera. Here I set up, I had set up something for the, uh, what is it called? The photoresistor, which would connect to your, you know, LCD and it'll tell you when it senses light. So you can kind of tell where the latency was, but actually photoresistors have some latency. So that's why I ditched that whole concept. So that's what that was for. But however, now what I want to do is I want to break out all the pins in a nicer board, some kind of a mounting solution for my uh, oscilloscopes. And I'm planning on putting two camera ports. And just to clean this up, all I'm going to have to do is remove this guy and remove this guy and the XC60. That's what I'm trying to go for here. And uh, just create my PCB tester. It's not only going to be a PCB tester, it's only going to be a nice source of five volts for anything else, you'll see that in a bit. So I think I should stop talking here and uh, let's jump to the uh, design and you can kind of get a better idea. I just basically broke out all the pins also so we can connect more than one LED or other things if we wanted to. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump to the PC and carry on from there. All right guys, so I've gone ahead and skipped over the schematic because I didn't create one. I just straight jumped into the PCB design because I already know what I want and it's very simple. There's no need for a schematic. Even though schematic would make it easier, more understandable possibly, but there's just really no need for this. So what I've done here, as you can tell, the Arduino is right in the middle. And then right behind it, we have the Maytech uh, voltage regulator or the step down regulator. And here are the pads that will, where the XC60 will be connected. So it will just come in connect here and then it'll give this the uh, 4s lipo and it'll output the 5 volts from the Maytech uh, regulator to everything else here now if you take a closer look here I've set up all of these pin headers down here now these two are basically the ones that are right on the Arduino and I wanted to create this to stay modular because sometimes I need to do stuff with Arduinos and uh, I hate soldering directly right onto the Arduino because some of them come with the pin headers already installed and it's actually a pain to get it out. So this way it'll just keep it very modular and I could just use it for a lot of other things also. So if I wanted to add more things, I can easily do that. So I left uh, two pinouts for each uh, pin basically. And if we take a look at the edge of the board here, I put a ground rail and a 5 volt rail and same thing goes for the bottom. Now this is for, you know, sometimes I need things that will uh, just need 5 volts and this will make it really easy for me to set up uh, if I needed to. Obviously, we're not going to be able to put like 10 servos. This thing won't handle that. But it's just, just to make it easier for me. If I needed to power up a receiver real quick and see if it has an issue or not, then I can easily do that. Now, as you can tell here, I've made some extra modifications. I've added vid1 and then vid2. This is for if I wanted to put two cameras at once, I can do that. Uh, the camera wires would go here, you know, the, the camera yellow wire, 5 volt and ground to power up the camera. And this video is going to be routed to here, which we'll do that right now, where I can set up my probe to touch any of these pins. They're all going to be touching each other. So any of them, depending on where I have it stacked, it'll just makes it easier for me. So I'll probably like grab this pin here. And this will be the ground, which is the uh, oscilloscope's alligator clip. I uh, usually grabs to ground, so it'll just grab any of these as well for video two. And same thing goes for video one here. So I just made two ports for that. And the rest is pretty simple. I mean, that's it. There's nothing else to it, really. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, gonna, I'm going to leave the ground unconnected because we'll do that through the copper uh, tool, which will do the grounding all for us. But we have to connect every everything else, basically. So let's go ahead and start with the VCC from the LiPo to the voltage regulator, which is going to provide power. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect it right there. So that's gotten power. We're going to ignore the grounds. And here's the 5 volt that's going to be powering everything. So first we're going to go to the 
be in because that'll power up the uh, Arduino here. And I'm just going to run another 5 volt to this 5 volt pad right here. There we go. And this is, I believe, also 5 volts. Yes, this top row is 5 volts here. There we go. So we're still on the first layer. We can jump below it to give it the ground. Actually, no, again, we don't need to connect ground. But don't forget, we still need to connect video. Here, I've connected all these together, as you can tell. Basically, they're all connected like this. And now we need to take video to put it here. But the thing is with that is we're not going to be able to cross it because uh, this is in the way. So we're going to actually have to remove that. And then we're going to have to redo that here. So I'm just going to make some extra room. And I'll explain why right now. So there we go. That's going there. So I'm going to drop this to here. And then I'm going to switch to the bottom layer, which is right there. Now we can go through the top layer. And since these are, you know, these are multi-layer holes, we don't have to jump back to the first layer and connect. Uh, which is going to make it really easy for us. So now we're just connected right there. That was really easy. And same thing goes for here. Let's do the same thing. We're going to go on the first layer because uh, these pads are on the first layer. So I'm just going to do that. Come up here. Right here is going to be good. And then I'm going to jump to the bottom layer. And then just, uh, there we go. Just connect one of these guys. So something's up with my links here. So I should double check this now. Uh oh, what did we erase here? We should not have erased that. There we go. Okay, so we have to make sure this is vid2. I accidentally did it vid3 because I was debugging, which is the net, which allows it to connect to that. So let's do that again. We're at first layer, jump up to here. Oh, so there we go. First layer, jump up to here, switch the layer, and then connect it there. Now let's connect these guys together. Uh, we're going to do this on the first layer here. There we go. There we go. And we have a little issue there. We'll check that right now. Okay. So we, with this one's unable to connect for some reason. It's on vid2 as you can tell the net there. But what we can do is we can grab our pad to pad tool. And then we just do something like this. And we're going to say okay. And theoretically now we should be able to connect it. We're still unable to connect it for some reason. Um... Yeah, this is a little weird issue that's going on right now. It's okay. I'll come back to that in a bit right now. So what else do we need? We need 5 volts. So we need to connect all the 5 volts together here. So we can pass this 5 volt through uh, just because this is on the second layer. And the red is the first layer. So we're going to be totally fine. And we can just come here and just give it 5 volts from right there. We could even add some capacitors to this board if we really wanted to. All right. There we go. And we're just going to right there that's beautiful okay so basically everything's connected all we need to do is the grounds the grounds are the only thing that's not connected currently and what we can do is we're gonna go to the first layer we'll grab this tool it's called the copper tool and then uh, we'll find a corner from the outside click on it and then click on the other corner click on the other corner and on the last one you want to do a right click just like this and now theoretically all the ground is connected and how do we know that we see that this is there's an opening you see that the black area here will be cut out so you know basically it just uh, isolates this connection to here if you can see that but the ground is open to this whole ground plane as you can tell so it's all opened uh what do we have here so this is the grounds are all opened here grounds are all open you see these how they're closed we also still have to fix this one ground is open just double checking all the grounds are open here open 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 perfect all right, these are all opened and these are all opened. Everything else is closed. Yep, looking good. I think we're basically done. Something's up with this. I just don't want to bother anymore. I give it like 10 minutes and then uh, it doesn't even matter anymore. So yeah, but these are all good because you see they're isolated now, uh, which is really good. Ground is, is opened as you can tell right there. That means this whole, you know, the red part here is all copper and it's all ground. Okay, that's perfect there. And here also, here also and this whole rail is good the grounds here everything looking really great so yeah now i'm going to go ahead and download this and once i download it i'll update it up upload it to the shared project page on um pcb way if you also wanted to use this you can go ahead and do that as well and um yeah this will be here in a couple days hopefully from pcb way and uh, we can actually test this out so this is going to be our new camera test and it's also like a uh breakout board for uh, an Arduino Nano here, which can be very useful for a lot of things also. 
and um yeah and well that's it guys i really hope you guys enjoyed it learned something here and there i know it's nothing too advanced but it's just kind of uh just a little video i just wanted to upload and just to see the process of what i do if i was just going to make a little basic board like this so yeah really hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one peace out guys